Welcome to the American Dream, a real show, not a reality show that started right here in San Diego, America's finest city. But now we're going to take you into your own market for real stories of real neighborhoods through real professionals. I'm your host, Craig Sewing. Let's start the American Dream right now. The search is over, baby. I'm right here, and I got it. The American Dream, the only show that combats negative media, not owned by a network, commercial-free, unscripted. Hey, these beautiful cars take a lot of maintenance and tune-ups to keep them running. My amazing real estate team is no different. My name's Clint Jordan, your host of American Dream TV. Today we're down here in old Colorado City. It's established back in 1859 during the gold rush. There's over a hundred small businesses. And again, when we need our tune-ups, we come here to the new canvas. Come on inside, let's meet Steve and Patino. Steve, Patina, how are you guys? Great to see you. Great to see you. Good to see you, brother. Good to see you, buddy. Hey, thanks for having us. Of course, thank you for coming. Of course, thanks for always taking care of our team. So oh, tell, us, tell us a little bit about what you guys do. So I'm Steve, I'm the laser technician. I'm certified laser specialist at Intact Mobile. Awesome. And I'm Bettina. I specialize in helping people age gracefully with medical aesthetics. So Botox, um, fillers, skin tightening treatments. I do some scar revisions with camouflage tattooing and skin Perfect. Cool. Yeah. So, and then you guys get to take care of our team today, but um, you guys want to show us around a little bit real quick? Sure. In fact, I got Raquel Pennington in the back. You want to take a look at a, a tattoo removal? What do you got? Raquel Pennington. The UFC fighter? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Let's go check it out. <laughs> All right. Huge fan. Still been in the UFC kicking butt for many, many years. So, what are you doing here? What do you haven't done? Get some tat removal. Eek. I guess you get punched in the face and punch him for a little bit. That probably doesn't hurt a lot, right? <laughs> She's got a humongous pain problem. She does amazing. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing after this? Uh, I'm actually going to go train. I'm going to tag along. D do you mind? No. Oh, that makes sense. going to go see Raquel. But it's a train. Raquel, have fun getting that tat removal, and then I'll see you to training. Yeah, sounds good. What happened? I told you, you didn't want none of that. That was crazy. I thought I did. So, <laughs> hey, I want to thank you again for hanging out with me today. Uh, and we're at the home of Raquel and Tisha's. And again, thank you guys so much. You're both are trailblazers in the industry, kind of kicking down doors for equality and kicking in faces at the UFC. So, and then uh, tell me, are you guys having a baby? We are. <laughs> Congratulations on that. Yeah. I saw your gender reveal party. What is it? We're having a little girl. You're bringing another female into this world. A little tiny world. Rocky, little ninja. You got plans for her? What year? Like 2050. 2050 champ. champ. Be super, super <laughs> cool. And then you've been fighting since 2013, correct? In the UFC. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's a good run. Um, you're currently number five. What are your future goals? Uh, fight number two in the world. A couple weeks. Take that spot, and then uh, run for that world title. Become the champion. Defend that. And then on to future plans. I get to carry Super. the next. Are you carrying the next? I am. That is so, so exciting. It's <laughs> got goosebumps. <laughs> and then, would you like to introduce? Yeah, so this is my wife, Tisha. Another little <laughs> badass in the world. Yeah, <laughs> two super badasses, and then they're uh, carrying one too, so. Yeah, 2024, I plan on coming back, making another run at it. I'm still in the top 10, so I think, uh, you know, I got a chance of becoming the champion as well. That'd be so cool. Yeah, <laughs> <Karen Cumberbell. laughs> <That's just laughs> yeah total badass. So thank you guys again so much for spending the day with us. Um, I very much appreciate it. appreciate what you guys do. Um, and super honored and humbled to be here, so. Yeah. I appreciate it. It's been awesome. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, guys. I'd like to thank our guests today, Stephen Bettina and the new Canvas. Of course, Raquel and Tisha. Uh, congratulations on the new baby. Wish you guys the best of success with all your goals and stuff. Again, I'm Clint Jordan, your host of the American Dream TV, Colorado Springs. If you have a small business that you want to highlight that gives back more than they take, if you've got 
somebody in the community that really shines and stands out, or if you've got a really cool piece of property you want highlighted on your show, give me a call. Again, I'm Clint Jordan, and this is me showing you about us. Until next time, Colorado Springs. your host of American Dream and today we are strolling the streets of our downtown state certified creative district where our award-winning art in the street program was born. Today I'm here with special guest Dan Stewart and he was pivotal in where we're walking now in Adaman Alley celebrating 100 years of Colorado's most cherished tradition embracing the elements of ice, wind, and fire. Dan, he did his first hike up Pikes Peak in 1990 with the group and in 2000 he was an inducted as a member and has been serving as the president of the club since 2018. Dan, thanks for being here. I would love to know a little bit of how members are selected into the community of the group. Well, it, it's um, interesting because this club has probably endured because it only allows one new member every year. So since 1922, when five people climbed the mountain, uh, the very next year they added one more. And every year since, except a couple of exceptions, they've added one more person. At this point, we have about 104 members. Uh, about 42 of them are still living. Uh, the selection process is really a Byzantine kind of process because we have a, an objective scoring system where we look at people's length of residency in, in the Pikes Peak region, okay. how many 14ers they've climbed, their, their mountaineering expertise. But anybody can apply to hike with us and we have an application on our website. And now your son is one of the members as well, right? That's right, yes. What was it like hiking with him for the first time? Oh, it, it's wonderful. It, really, every new member has to uh, earn the ability to get in, and that involves being comfortable in the mountains. Right. You have to be a good trail companion, too. Uh, from his standpoint, he'd, he's hiked all the 14ers. His wife, actually, has been along with us a couple of times. And so I know this group is called Add a Man, but we're in the 21st century, and I'm sure everybody wants to know, are there any women hikers and uh, members? There, there are absolutely women hikers in the club. They, they have been um, invited since 1983. So Sue Graham uh, was invited as a guest in 1983. She was welcomed into the club. That was a time when, to the extent those were glass ceilings, women were breaking them. So when Sue came along, she, she was a perfect fit for the, uh, being uh, the first guest female. And then when she became a member a number of years later, uh, she was a perfect fit to be the first member. So this is Pike's Peak in all its glory with the fire works displayed. The artist here is a, is a fellow out of Los Angeles named El Mac. His work, work is known internationally, so it is a wonderful addition to the, uh, the alley and really we gave him the central location because uh, his work is so well known. This is actually his son who is now three years old. I love that you can see the wonder in his eyes seeing the fireworks, which I mean, we all appreciate every year. So at nighttime, what happens here? So what will happen, the idea is that this will be projected to kind of the changing climate, the changing phases of Pikes Peak. set out two and a half years ago to bring the spirit of Pikes Peak to downtown Colorado Springs. We wanted to capture that Colorado spirit of perseverance and adventure and that sense of pride that we all feel for Pikes Peak. How do you think we did? <laughs> Step outside between 10 and 11 in the morning and look up at the peak. The Adamant Club every single year, if the weather allows, 
will be flashing mirrors back down to the city. What we really want this year in particular, our 100th anniversary, is to have the city flashing mirrors back at them. Well, on behalf of the club, thank you all for your support for this amazing new addition to downtown Colorado Springs. We are so grateful for the many partners uh, that have made this project possible. My name is Monica Breckenridge and I am your host for the American Dream TV. We are here in Colorado Springs, Colorado and our city sits at 6,035 feet above sea level. Our city is fulfilling so many Olympic dreams. I'm gonna take you on a behind the scenes tour of the US Olympic and Paralympic Museum with a special guest, Chloe Deigert. And later on, we're gonna to tour an amazing home built by Galliant Homes. Chloe Deigert is a 10 time world champion cyclist. She is an Olympic medalist in gold and silver, and she is the world record holder in the individual pursuit. Let's go meet her. Hey. Hi. I'm so glad to meet you. Wow. Thanks for doing this Yeah, for sure, yes. I'm so glad to do this tour. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Hey, look, there you are. <laughs> So what makes um, Colorado Springs Olympic City, USA? Well, the Olympic Museum here, which is amazing, um, but also the Olympic Training Center, and that's where I spend most of my time here when I'm training. What was it like making your first team? Uh, yeah, so I was 19 years old. Uh, actually, the Olympics really weren't even on the radar at that point. The track coach at the time, he came out and recruited me, and I had about six months until the game, so it was in uh, December of 2015. I went to my first race in January. Uh, we got third. Uh, the next month in February, went to London. We won world championships, and then the Olympics were in that summer, and we got a silver medal. And so it was a, quite a whirlwind, but it was a miracle. So what makes Colorado Springs ideal for athletes to train? Well, for one, the altitude here. The altitude simulates and gives us uh, the extra red blood cells. So when we go back down to sea level, it gives us that extra bit of oxygen that we need to make us go a little bit faster. So how did it feel getting your Olympic medal? Uh, it was uh, quite the honor, actually. So I actually, I got silver from Rio and I got a bronze from Tokyo. And hopefully in Paris, I'll have couple gold. I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait to see you right there. Yeah. <laughs> Galliant Homes is known for its luxury architectural design. And this home is a great example with its modern mountain living. The great room features stacking sliding doors, modern architectural custom light fixtures, 10 to 20 foot ceilings and eight foot doors. The master bath spa has a walkthrough shower and radiant heated floors, freestanding jetted tub. Bathrooms feature auto toe kick lighting. Every bedroom has its own in-suite bath with walk-in closet. Check out this massive 10 foot waterfall island the hidden fridge and dishwasher, and the hidden pantry. There's a trifold pass-through window which leads to the built-in outdoor kitchen that is perfect for entertaining. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the American Dream TV. See you next time. Springs consistently ranks as one of the best places in the nation to live, work, and play. And it's no surprise. We are nestled at the foot of gorgeous Pikes Peak Mountain. We have abundant outdoor activities and business opportunities, and arts and culture are a priority. 
Welcome to American Dream TV. I am your host, Marquesa Hobbs, and today we are coming from the vibrant downtown Colorado Springs area where our rich history, culture, and innovation all come together. Our first stop will be at an iconic 100-year-old landmark, the City Auditorium. Come on, let's go. I am so honored and excited to be with two community advocates and leaders today. We have Leah Davis with Rowe, who is the Curator of History at the Colorado Springs Pioneers Museum, and Linda Weiss, who is the President and CEO of the Colorado Springs City Auditorium Project and the founder of the Colorado Springs Conservatory. Welcome ladies, we are so happy and honored to have you with us today. I would love it if you would give us an overview of the history, some of the highlights. Absolutely. So one of my favorite aspects of the history of City Auditorium is that it was really dreamed up by a group of women, a group of women that were part of the Colorado Springs Civic League. This took a few decades, but they didn't give up. So finally in 1921, voters approved the funds to build a brand new city auditorium. It's called the People's Building because it's gonna be a gathering place. I know it was designed by world-renowned architect Thomas McLaren. So he moved to Denver, later came to Colorado Springs, and he had left a lasting mark on our community. He built churches, beautiful homes, schools, and was the lead architect on this building. And this building being a classical revival building, it's elegant and refined, but it's not over the top ostentatious. Absolutely. Let's transition over to Linda, who's gonna share more with us about what's going on right now with the Colorado Springs Cultural Community Collaborative. We're seven pillars, arts and culture, education, wellness, creative entrepreneurship, Western heritage, faith, and military. Part of the business model is to really be intentional and be able to curate how those sectors um, come together. And those workforce programs do include a hospitality culinary capstone program, a media arts program, and then also a theater arts program. And then the last is an, a creative um, early childhood enrichment training program for teachers. It's such an exciting project and I'm so grateful to both of you for coming mm -hmm. to share both to our community and all of those who are watching this, the exciting things that Colorado Springs has on the horizon. So thank you both for your time and your talents. We appreciate you both so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Old North End is one of the most unique neighborhoods in Colorado Springs. It marries old world sophisticated and charm along with modern conveniences of being downtown where you can easily walk or bike right to so many conveniences. Come on in and let's take a look at this fabulous home. Welcome. I'd like to share one of my listings with you that was also designed by Thomas McLaren. This historic masterpiece offers a rare opportunity to own a beautiful home in the coveted Old North End of Colorado Springs. This home features 5,700 square feet. It has five bedrooms, six bathrooms. It was meticulously restored, which resulted in an award for excellence from the Historic Preservation Alliance of Colorado Springs. These are the original blueprints that Thomas McLaren back in 1901 designed for the creation of this home. We hope you enjoyed learning more about this brilliant community that is striving to serve as a creative catalyst for the future while respecting and maintaining a connection with our historic past. Thank you for joining us on American Dream TV today. I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now. I'd like to introduce Samantha Wood. She's the owner of Rocky Mountain Food Tours. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your business? Yeah, well, first of all, thank you for having me, Lisa. This mm -hmm. is so exciting. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I own Rocky Mountain Food Tours. You and I met, you were one of our first ever guests. Yes. So thank you for yes. believing in our business yes. so many Long years ago. Yes. Um, yeah, and we're still doing food tours yeah. here in downtown wow. Colorado Springs every week year round. So, yeah. yeah. Very good. All right. Yeah. I mean, what better than to sample a bunch of stuff and see a bunch it, of areas. It's such a great way. I mean, we sh we say that our tagline basically is that we tell the story of Colorado Springs yeah. through food. It's and really what better cool. medium than food? Yeah. It's oh, my favorite sure. medium. I know, right? me too. Yeah, for and sure. It's 
it's a pleasure that we've been able to kind of represent the culinary community yeah. in that way. Yeah. And we work with more than 20 destinations. Yeah. And yeah. we have yeah. speakeasies yeah. that we work with. So people <laughs> find out that Colorado Springs has speakeasies yeah. and they're like, yeah, what? Know. And there's multiple speakeasies actually more than we even get to feature right. on our tours. Um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of our privilege to be able to represent yeah. that to so many people who are coming into the community, but also all the locals yeah. that yeah. Uh, want to explore their own backyard as well. Um, yeah, so, you know, it, it's a very unique kind of dining experience yeah. where you can go to five, yeah. four to five places in three hours. Oh yeah. You know? And get an expert like you who knows things. It's not just a meal, it's a whole experience. And I think that's what people are into these days, is yeah. experiences no matter what right. form they yeah. take. People want to know where the food came from. They yeah. want to know the story behind the chef. Yeah. Um, they want to know how it was made, why it's special, um, especially if things are unique to our area. Like right. For instance, our Pueblo Green Chilies, which right. I'm sure you're familiar with. Oh, yeah, for sure. They're so famous here, and so there's restaurants that work that into their yeah. menu, and so that's always fun when we get to feature um, some kind of famous yes. food like that and really talk yeah. about this is so Colorado. Yes. You know, a lot of people wonder, well, what is, what's Colorado yeah, food? Yeah, How do you define like, Colorado right. food? And, um, and I think, you know, for us, it's things like um, Rocky Ford cantaloupe. Yes. Palisade peaches. Yes. It's a lake of sweet corn. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's our Colorado <laughs> lamb that's mm -hmm. world, oh, yes. world famous. You know, all of these things, these really fresh you know, produce items, mm -hmm. um, you know, are, are known throughout the country. And right. I think that's part of part of our culinary yeah. story. We're here in downtown Colorado Springs and I'm with Phil Duhon and he is the owner of Burnt Toast, which is a new restaurant that has been here for about six months. But Phil is no stranger to the culinary world in Colorado Springs. So we're so thrilled to be here and hope you will enjoy our discussion with Phil. What made you decide to open up a breakfast place? There, one, there's a demand for it. Mm -hmm. um, and the market's been kind of left open for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then after COVID, mm -hmm. it's changed the dynamic of restaurants, uh, the, the bar industry, the sports bar mm -hmm. industry, a lot of that's changed. But um, just the sheer volume of breakfast restaurants, there's, there's less of them. Less of them, okay. So, so you, you have a bigger audience. Mm -hmm. People engage a little bit more in breakfast. You don't mm -hmm. see people on their phones. You see mostly people talking, conversing. Right. There's just a big market for it. Right. There's, there's, there's a lot of room for it. And you've been in the culinary industry around here for a, quite, a, oh, quite a while. Yeah, I started back in this town back in 97 when I came in. Okay. They, they brought me in from Louisiana. I'm a native here, but they brought me in from Lafayette. Okay. Where okay. I was a sous chef down in some of the restaurants down there. And I was, became the executive chef okay. at the Ritz. And then I was the executive chef at, uh, at the Chop House okay. for a couple of years. And then um, I helped Johnny set up Southside Johnny's. Mm -hmm. And then I did a few other things uh, with local chefs in town. Um, competed uh -huh. uh, and then I opened up Oscars back in uh -huh. 2003 and then went more to the the, the bar industry the sports bar and, and uh, really good fresh made pub fair and burgers mm -hmm. things like that thank you so much for having us I'm so glad you could be on this journey with us this is Lisa Robinson with American Dream TV and we'll see you when you're in Colorado Springs I'm gonna get something to eat see you next time Welcome to Selling Southern Colorado. I'm your host, Lauren Jordan, and today we are in beautiful downtown Colorado Springs, home to over 180 independent shops and restaurants. Whether you're a local seeking a quiet coffee shop or a traveler seeking adventure, downtown is the place to be. I'm taking you underground to what was once the city morgue but has since found new life as an Alice in Wonderland themed restaurant. Let's go down the rabbit hole. I'm here with Shannon. She is the general manager of the rabbit hole in downtown Colorado Springs. So Shannon, tell us about this amazing restaurant. 
Um, so the rabbit hole is a really awesome place. This is a historic building. It's got a lot of character. Um, we have lots of fun stories. Um, the rabbit hole's been here for 11 years. I've been with this company for two and a half, and it's amazing, amazing people to work for. We have a really fun menu. I've worked with some great chefs since I've been here, and the staff is really talented, so I think that's one of the biggest reasons we've been successful. We are almost fine dining, but we're like a little bit more casual as far as we don't require dress code or things like that. We try to do, you know, more of like a wild game, having some eclectic items on the menu. All of our drinks, our craft cocktails. I've heard rumors of ghost stories. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Have you had any kind of creepy experiences working here? So I would call our ghost a prankster. I haven't had anything <laughs> scary, thankfully, but, um, you know, uh, silly things from wine glasses falling off the, the racks for no reason. Our owner has a lot of really funny stories. Uh, one time he said he was doing some work and had his shirt off and he saw kind of like a dark shadowy sort of thing move through and was a little bit creeped out by that. And then when he went over to get his shirt, it was soaking wet, <gasps> like dripping wet. And there's no water or anything in here. Um, so it's always been interesting things like that. So yeah. thankfully we don't have a, we don't have a mean ghost. <laughs> very cool, very yes. cool. Just an annoying ghost. Yeah. We have eaten here, the food is wonderful. Thank you. Um, what is your favorite thing on your menu? That, that is a really tough question. And we get asked that a lot. You know, people want recommendations. I would say from the gamier side of things, our bison short ribs, are amazing. Mm -hmm. Those are braised anywhere from three to five hours every day in a good cherry whiskey sauce. Mm -hmm. um, so the flavor is very good, but they're very, very tender, fall off the bone. That is a staple item. So that is one that we've had from the get-go and will always carry. Um, something that kind of seasonally changes, we've got a duck confit on the menu right now. That's probably my favorite thing right now, but that bison short ribs are definitely an all-time classic. Yum. Yeah. Okay. And then I know you guys have a drink that I've seen it while dining here. I've never had it myself. Um, but it's actually on fire yep. on top. So what is that? So that is our white rabbit. That is our signature cocktail. Um, and what we do is it's it's basically like a boozy almond joy. That's the flavor profile that you're gonna get from that. So great for a dessert drink or definitely a pre-dinner, you know, enjoy it whenever. It's it's very, very flavorful. And I would definitely be down to make one for you if you guys wanna try it today. Yeah, I would love that. Let's yeah. do it. The white rabbit. I'm so excited. The drink that's on fire. Yes. Tell me what's in it. Okay, so I can't give away all of our <laughs> secrets, but the main ingredients are gonna be a vanilla vodka. We have a Malibu type liquor in there and then um, cream de cocoa. You nailed it. Almond Joy for sure. Yep. Very good. <laughs> Shannon, thank you so much. Thank you. Just minutes from downtown is Colorado Springs' oldest city park. Over 1,300 acres of orange sandstone dating back 250 million years ago. Always free to visitors, tons of great information inside, even some pretty cool exhibits for little ones. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Selling Southern Colorado. I'm your host, Lauren Jordan, owner of Affinity Home Partners. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show, produced from America's finest city, but shot in the heart of your neighborhoods. Don't forget positive media when the world really needs it. Follow us on social media at the American Dream TV. See you next time. In the meantime, cheers to your American dream.